Hey there guys! A month later than promised! Here is Taylor and I reviewing another anthology. If you missed our after anthology review, this time around we're doing an anthology called Mermaids and Other Mysteries of the Deep, edited by Paula Garan. Uh, it's about mermaids, in case you didn't guess from the title. Um, and unfortunately we can't keep this book, this very pretty cover, on Taylor's face the whole time because we have to talk about these things. I unfortunately did not have a chance to f read all of this anthology. I read uh, two-thirds, I think, in total, and I really, really enjoyed it. It was, um, even at its worst, worst, was interesting. It was well written, and there were some stories in here that I thought were absolutely fantastic. Overall, better than after, but that's purely my dislike of post-apocalyptic, I believe. 4.5. <laughs> Hello there. Uh, I read a lot more of this than Taylor, by which the only thing that I didn't read in here is Margot Lanahan's novella, which was very long and I didn't have time for that. 70 pages. 70 pages, yeah. No, I have a life. Uh, so I read all of them, and I think because of that, my opinion of this is a little bit more tempered. There were some more stories in here that weren't as fantastic, but overall I definitely as well enjoyed this more than after, and I really enjoyed the complexity of these stories, and the great depth of imagining that went into these, and the different ways you can talk about mermaids, not just as like the Disney idea or even the common lore, people really dug into lore that I'd never heard of or created their own lore and that was really cool. So if I had to give it a stars, I'd probably go with four stars for this for me. So the next thing that we're going to do to give you guys a flavor of what we liked and didn't like, we're going to talk about first our top three stories for each of us and then talk very briefly about our least favorite three stories to give you a feel of what went right and what went wrong in this anthology. There are 23 stories in this anthology overall, so it's a very brief snapshot and there is some overlap, but it'll be good. My favorite story is um, uh, Abyssus Abyssum Invocat butchered the Latin, I'm sorry, by Genevieve Valentine. I'm very proud I got her name correct this time. <laughs> it's not Valente, she's later in the anthology. Abyssum Abyssus Invocat was a brooding, uh, very emotionally restrained, yet um, bursting with that energy, uh, just around, outside the seams. I loved most of all the repetition of the slight variations on these the central um, mermaid, the the Little Mermaid, uh, Anderson story, and then it's just slight variations on it as we move forward through the plot and how those changes represent or you know different mind state of the one writing these stories. Very interesting story, very beautiful. This is actually a great moment of overlap because that story is also one of my top stories. I can't rank my top stories because I like them all for different reasons, but um, and if you watched our after anthology then you might know that Genevieve Valentine's story also made our top three for that anthology as well, but it was really interesting that in after she was able to showcase her plotting and reality kind of a story, very real and human in that way. And this story in this anthology was more about language and the beauty of language. And so that was so interesting to see the two different sides of her writing in that way and still loving it so much. Totally, they were completely different in style and everything, and yet she pulled off both. It's very unfair. Unsettlingly well. <laughs> One of my other favorite stories was Each to Each by Shannon McGuire, and this was actually the story that our professor said, if you read any of the stories out of this, you have to read this one. And I absolutely adored that story. It was so interesting. It brought in a little bit of sci-fi, and was just very well detailed and written, and about, you know, what would happen if the Navy went all female in the submarines, and these women were being modded as different fish, and so literally being made by the military into um, different mermaids, and oh, it was so good, so it was well really written. Good. It was really, really good. Um, I totally understand why she wanted us to read that. So, my next favorite was uh, The Mermaid of the Concrete Ocean 
by Kathleen R. Kiernan. Did I get it? Is it Caitlin? I think it's Caitlin. Caitlin R. Kiernan. <laughs> Again, so if you proud. missed the after anthology thing, he couldn't say her name there either. I'm so proud of getting her last name this time. Couldn't get her first one. Caitlin R. Kiernan. Now, this story surprised me because for most of it, I didn't actually enjoy it all that much. And this is kind of similar to her story in After, which I liked a lot of the ideas, but overall it lost me in the details. That just didn't quite follow up on what it suggested it was going to do. This, on the other hand, showed just how far a single detail can take a story in that, I'm not going to give that away, obviously, but, um, there is one piece of history revealed late in the story that really casts everything else in just the story and how we perceive mermaids in this context and all of that, completely different light, and it was fascinating and dark and haunting, and just that one aspect and how well it was delivered, with not too heavy-handed, just enough information to settle into the brain, was... It, it made the story for me, and it made it one of the most satisfying and interesting in the collection. For very, like, it was surprising. I'm, I, if you think that, you're that's confused, fine. confused, but I, I, I was I incredibly like pleased. Then that's again, it's fine. the kind of Kelly Link detail that you wouldn't <laughs> Anyways, my last uh, top three favorite story was The Drowned Mermaid by Christopher Barzak. And this was a story that it started off and I really didn't think that I was going to like it um, because it's this woman who's just lost her daughter and she finds a mermaid on the beach and she ends up taking this mermaid to her home and treating it like it's her daughter. And it's... Talk about sad and haunting, just absolutely a punch in the gut, and obviously I don't want to give away the end of the story, but just even just from that detail, you can tell just how it goes downhill into your emotions, and it just, it was this kind of story that snuck up on me, I didn't expect it to affect me in the way that it did, and then I finished reading it, and I was just like, ugh. Mm-hmm. This mm. is a perfect encapsulation of why we do this and how different readers we are. Yes, the <laughs> Mermaid of the Concrete Ocean was just a warm-up. Now, my last favorite, I like the ones Gretchen brought forward, but this story stood out to me, and it was Letters to a Body on the Cusp of Drowning by A.C. Wise. This was a difficult story uh, in form and language to parse and move through, so it was very long to read it, just trying to get everything that's going on, and it's because it's very polyvocal, only the same person across several different lifetimes, as they bleed into each other and pronouns for, because the gender of this character uh, is switching, um, even sentence to sentence, where it would switch back and forth Fourth, and it was incredibly confusing, um, but I found it to be so in intriguing of just the this aspect of sewing lives under your skin. Or is it? Did she use ghosts or souls? Yeah, ghosts of people. Yeah, are sewn into the skin, and so you actually become multiple like these multiple people. And. All, all of those things created just a very unique experience for me, which is why even for its difficult aspects, which might not have always been satisfying for me to try to figure out, were always, you know, memorable. And do you just want to just... We're going to go into least favorite stories because guess what, guys? One of his top three favorites was one of my least three favorites. And for the purpose that I felt like this story needed like another round of editing, it had such a great potential, but I don't know, I didn't feel like enough of the details that were interesting to me satisfied me 
in terms of how difficult the story was to read and so I definitely respect it and I don't hate it on any level but for me I was just like this needed to feel more satisfying and it doesn't it just feels like a very difficult complicated idea I ran through with no resolution no satisfaction no purpose to anything that just occurred in terms of like the feeling I like to get from short stories so I just again respect the hell out of that story don't think that it was successful as it could have been and needed to be for the amount of difficulty in it so I unlike Gretchen did not finish this anthology or nearly finish it tisk, tisk, tisk. which for me actually went well because it means that I didn't have very negative feelings about most of the stories that I was reading or at least not wholly negative so there was one however that stood out to me being not really worth my time and that was the Nebraskan and the Nereid by Gene Wolfe thank you ground paper <laughs> this story was confusing but not in a satisfying way in that it was just things were not properly set up things were not sufficiently elaborated on things were confusing and it seemed really half-baked with theming and just what it was trying to accomplish so while it was not you know the worst thing I've read it just I spent a lot of time trying to figure out what was going on in the story and when I finally came to answers they were not very interesting answers and I wasn't really happy with all the time I had to put in to get that lame a result. Speaking of stories that were just confusing, the last story in this anthology is Marguerite's Secret Agent by Tanith Lee and this is actually really upsetting because I really wanted to love Tanith Lee's story and I didn't. It's bookended in this weird way. It's like this story in the middle bookended by this description of a painting which is supposed to all connect and then doesn't. And also the main character of that one, when you actually get into the story, ends up feeling like a super stalker of this lady and her son who in the beginning is presented as an invalid. And it's really really weird and like just all of the characters made me feel uncomfortable and the book ending didn't work um on either end of the story and just made no sense and it just felt like a lot of reading to just feel uncomfortable in all the wrong ways my next choice was let's find out together miss carstairs and the merman by dahlia sherman and this was not a solid dislike i i enjoyed it to a degree. It was much more a period piece, uh, very naturalistic in the writing style. However, while it is by its nature, both uh, in style of writing and thematically, supposed to be very emotionally restrained and even stunted uh, in certain ways, as a result I found the significance of the ending to be underwhelming. I don't think that there was enough being brought forward. And again, that's still going to be a minor complaint because I don't think it failed at anything. I just don't think it accomplished all that it could have. Speaking of people with really, really fun names to say, uh, my last least favorite story is Mermaid Singing Each to Each by Cat Rambo, who does have a wonderful name and really did have a wonderful concept for a story. But in, like, actuality, the story just seemed like a bunch of disjointed pieces of promising ideas thrown together into one story that was confusing, had no resolution, had, like, one-dimensional characters, and a plot that didn't go anywhere. So all in all, I was left, like, every time a new element of the story was introduced, like, the main character is genderless, and she chose to go agender after her uncle's sexual abuse, and so this is a thing in this culture that they can choose to be genderless, and it's this big thing. She brought up, like, church issues with that, and then 
her ship has an AI and she blames the ship for what happened with her uncle because the ship didn't warn her. So really, really cool sounding, right? Super cool. And then the story just goes nowhere. Absolutely nowhere. And so I was just like, honestly, so frustrated with that story that it just made me like actually upset. So I wanted to like it and then it just didn't do anything. So, ugh. But on, on a similar note that serves as a transition, because my least favorite story was Sarah Monette's Somewhere Beneath Those Waves Was Her Home. And this is an interesting least favorite choice because I haven't actually read the story. What? I think the story title is bullshit. What? You can't dislike a story because of the title! No, I can dislike a title because it's bad. And Somewhere Beneath Those Waves Was Her Home is a bad title. It is long-winded, it is flavorless, and it's dumb. That is such a good story. It is. It almost made my favorites list. Don't listen to this butt. Don't listen to him at all. It's a really good story. It's a terrible title. But it's a good story about women bonding together in the face of abusive men. So... <laughs> Don't listen to this man. Make that a little bit more pointed, Gretchen. I challenge you. <laughs> Anyways, guys, this has been our review of Mermaids and Other Mysteries of the Deep, short story anthology edited by Paula Gran. We do have one more short story collection from this class that we're both in together, which I at least definitely want to review because I think it's my favorite one yet. Absolutely. So... We will be back for that before the semester ends. But anyways, overall, I think that if you are into mermaids and mermaid lore, definitely pick this up. The good stories definitely outweigh the bad. And even if you aren't into mermaids, there is a level of imagination in here that is absolutely spectacular, and I loved it. You don't need to be into mermaids to like mermaid stories. Thanks, guys!